the world will lose $10.5 trillion annually to cybercrime by 2025. That is a crazy amount of money. But how do these cybercrimes happen? With hundreds of programming languages, thousands of frameworks, and millions of lines of code, there's gonna be bugs. Software is a lot like us humans. Versatile, intelligent, but deeply insecure. In this video, I'm going to describe five ways that software can be vulnerable and be attacked by those who have some intentions that are questionable. SQL injection. One of the central sources of truth in any application is its database. Databases is a very broad term. There's even lots of different types of databases. Of course, I have videos describing this if you're interested. However, the primary way of talking to this database is through a language called SQL, or structured query language for short. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. A common application would have an architecture like this. A user on a website will have a form which will send the information to the server, and then the server takes that input from the user and gets it back from the database that is then returned back to the client. Great, but let's go a little bit deeper. Let's say our form has a search bar where a user can search for names in our database. When I insert the name Lewis into the search form, the information is sent up to the database. So I have to write server-side code to talk to the database database to get the results from the user. So I create this SQL statement where I search the user's table where the name is equal to the input like this. So if I enter Lewis or Sally or Will, it will look for those values. Awesome. There is definitely nothing wrong with this statement whatsoever. Did you read the video title at all? Like, is this not obvious foreshadowing at this point? What if instead of putting another name, I put in a certain SQL statement? If I put in or one equals one, it pulls the entire database because of the true value, one equals one. This is SQL injection and it's seriously dangerous. In 2017, 7-Eleven lost over 4.2 million debit and credit card numbers due to an SQL injection attack. However, there's easy ways to avoid this attack. One is to sanitize your inputs. Sanitizing can mean many things, but essentially makes it so that the input from users is seen as one data type and not one that can affect or execute your code. Two is to use an object relational mapping package. This is a package that turns your SQL statements into an easy to use API. These are not necessarily vulnerability free, but are often maintained to avoid this, so you don't have to. And three is to set correct permissions for your database user. If you set the database user to read very limited amount of data, then even if they do an SQL injection, they won't be able to access the critical data. When you're building an application, you're going to have dependencies, which also have their own dependencies that might be vulnerable. But thanks to today's sponsor, Sneak, you can build your application fast and with the ease of mind that you're keeping your application secure for your users. Sneak scans your code and your dependencies for your applications against its massive vulnerability database to keep your app secure at every moment. Setup is extremely easy as Sneak can integrate with your IDE, repository, or CICD pipeline so that you don't accidentally push that scary code to production. I've been using Sneak in my GitHub repositories to privately alert me and submit a pull request when a known vulnerability is found in one of my dependencies. Even better, it works with Docker images too, so you can find vulnerabilities in every area of the tech stack. Click the link in the description to find out why top companies like AWS, Google, Twilio, and more are using Sneak to secure their infrastructure. I mean, they're smart cookies, so I would trust them. Cross-site scripting. Have you ever noticed that every single application you use now is on the web? It's probably how you're seeing my handsome face on the screen right now. Man, fetch the life. On the web, websites are organized and laid out using a markup language called HTML. If you right-click on any website and inspect, you can see it on any website you visit. HTML is made up of tags that organize text and others across your screen. But how can a text tag hurt you? Well, that's one way. The real answer is the script tag, which runs JavaScript code that is inside of it. Let's say I made a popular blog and let anyone comment on it. I want everyone to have a little bit of jazz in their comments, so I allow my users to style their comments with HTML. After I come back, I see an alert that I don't remember putting there. Okay, no biggie. Wait, 
Why is everything looking so weird? Since I allowed my users to insert their own HTML, they were able to add a script tag, which can do things like grab all your cookies or local storage information, change comments, or potentially contact my server. This ran because it was assumed that the website I was going to was trusted. In 2005, MySpace user named Sammy wrote a script tag that would automatically add you as a friend and add you in the hero section. This was an exponential effect that gathered over 1 million friends in 24 hours. That's 1 million more friends than I got in my 28 years of life. There are ways to prevent this. Restrict your users to using trusted tags. A lot of frameworks that you might use will probably already have this covered. And two is to secure your cookies. Many web applications tie session cookies to the IP address of the user who originally logged in, then only permit the IP to use that cookie. DDoS. You've probably already experienced this if you've ever visited a site or a game that just launched and gets extremely overwhelmed by the amount of users trying to go to it at the same time. However, that experience can be used in a malicious way. A direct denial of service attack is a malicious way you disrupt the traffic of a server by overwhelming it with your own traffic. Think of you trying to turn at an intersection and millions of cars are driving by. What makes this attack so deadly is the distributed aspect of this attack. These computers are sometimes bots or other computers that are being controlled remotely. This makes it hard for the server to identify who is the imposter among us. Now, a direct denial of service attack is not a vulnerability in itself, but can be used as a way to find vulnerabilities in an application. Usually these types of attacks are complex and can be isolated to what layer they are targeting. There are a lot of creative ways that DDoS attacks are carried out, so it's really hard to 100% be bulletproof against them. However, there are preventative measures. In 2018, GitHub was hit with a DDoS attack that clocked in at 1.35 terabits per second for 20 minutes, which means that over 200 terabytes were sent. Wow, that is bonkers. That's like sending 540 million images in 20 minutes. That's nothing. My grandma is sharing more memes on Facebook than that. There's two things you can do to really make sure that you're at least prepared for something like this. One is knowing your network's traffic. How much volume do you typically get and try and scout out any suspicious traffic that might be coming from random IPs. And two is taking advantage of cloud platforms to load balance your traffic. Of course, a giant data center is going to be a lot better than your measly little server. Log4j. This one was discovered recently and was a nuclear bomb when it hit the internet. Log4j is a logging utility for the Java programming language. It's used to log information for developers to see across their applications. When it was announced that there was a deadly vulnerability affecting it, people freaked out. This was something that could affect millions, even billions since you know, Java likes to shove it in our face and all. Java has something called the Java Naming and Directory Interface or JNDI for short. This lets you get resources from another server. When developing an app, this comes super handy because you can quickly download code that you can plug into your application. Similar to SQL injection and cross-site scripting, if a user was to input a JNDI lookup as input, and the logger logged it, it would execute that lookup where a hacker could pull the resources and execute it within your app. When this was first discovered, there were 10 million attempts an hour to exploit this vulnerability. The most important thing you can do now to protect yourself against this is to update yourself to the newest version of Log4j. That way, you're up to date. Cross-site request forgery. Let's say I made an awesome website where I can add and delete pictures of awesome cats I found around the internet. I also have the feature to let people comment about how cool these cats might be. We really just need to stop letting people comment. The way I program this is in the back end is that I sent a post request, which will send data to the URL coolcast.com slash delete cat with my cookie attached so the server can authenticate me and the ID of the cat I want to delete. This means is 100% secure, right? Are you still following for this foreshadowing trick that I'm doing? When I click on a link that was in the comments, I go back to my app and see all of my cats are gone. Why? In the link that I clicked in the comments, there was a hidden request made to the endpoint that I have created, which since I'm already logged into, it automatically included the authentication token. I have been pwned 
yet again. In 2020, TikTok was hit with a vulnerability that allowed attackers to send messages to other TikTok users. TikTok ended up patching this within three weeks, but lots of damage has already been done. This type of attack still happens to this day, but is easily preventable. The most common is anti-CSRF tokens. These are tokens that are randomly generated by your server on request, so that when you submit the form, you have to provide the correct token. And this is also implemented in most backend frameworks. The web is a scary place, but if you're constantly thinking about security, then you're in good hands. Thank you again to Sneak for sponsoring this video. I love their product. There's a lot of ways that software can get hacked. So if you want to see another video, let me know in the comments. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for more dev and tech content. Peace out, coders.